Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an article which is written by a woman titled, Six Signs You Need to Raise Your Standards. And guys, this article, which is obviously written for a female audience, the female writer here is pretty much telling them they need to raise their standards with men. As if the standards nowadays are already high enough, aren't already ridiculously high enough. And those of you guys right now that do that date regularly, or those of you guys that used to date regularly, but simply don't do it anymore for a lot of, a lot of very valid reasons, this is not going to come to a surprise to you. In the current environment that we're in, where the standards are so ridiculously high, that there's no wonder that so many women nowadays, especially when they get to their 30s, are single. And they complain there are no good men out there. And what am I talking about? The classic stereotypes, which I bring up quite often about all the sixes. Guy that's six feet tall or above, six-figure income, six-pack, and let's throw in some advanced degrees, speaks a foreign language, plays a musical instrument, the list goes on and on. Now, she's going to go into this whole thing and just goes again to prove my point. Now, I will say this, to be fair, there are certain things, certain elements, that's a better way to describe it, that I do can see where she's coming from, certain things. Like, I got no problem with a gal wanting a guy that has his shit together, okay? Because I've been encouraging my viewers here from day one, get your shit together, self-improvement, doing the best you can make of yourself, etc., etc. But there's a big difference between a guy that has his shit together in his life, he's doing well, has a good job, got some money, but yet he's still not considered to be good enough for a gal nowadays, right? Because he doesn't have a Learjet, or his own yacht, well, he's a low-value man, even though this guy has good money, does well for himself, etc., etc., and you get what I'm talking about. Also, you're going to see here multiple times in this article, and I'll point this out, how the BS, and I'm saying BS here, effinist narrative that nowadays a man and a woman, they can be equal in the sense that the guy, he doesn't mean to make a whole lot of money because if she makes a lot of money, hey, that's no problem. Or if she's the leader in the relationship and he's the follower in the relationship, well, that's okay too because the women can do these things, blah, blah, blah. But in reality, when that's the situation, it turns the women off because they don't want a guy that really makes less than them. They don't want a guy that follows them around, even though some of the masculine wants a guy to follow them around. So this will really point out the BS narrative that you see here. So a lot of interesting and entertaining elements to this article. So jumping right into it, it says here, uh, you might be pursuing people who can't handle you. Uh, Miley Cyrus is incredibly famous. She's definitely not acting like she was, but I think most of us can remember how famous she was a few years back. She was mainstream. She was one of the few Disney darlings to have a successful music career while having a hit TV show. I wouldn't call myself a Miley fan, but I did attend her concert years ago when she first deviated from Hannah Montana. The production on that show was undeniable. She had become an A-list celebrity. And she also became a bit of an A-list wacko, too, I might add. Uh, Miley was recently on the Call Her Daddy podcast. I'm not a regular listener, but I'm, I'm kind of hip to the story of how that podcast evolved. For those who don't know, the CHD became popular when it started in 2018. The then two hosts of the show were brutally honest about their SAX lives with men in a comedic way. Since then, it has matured to a showcase singular host Alex Cooper, a gorgeous 27-year-old with a $60 million deal to keep the podcast going. That's all in bold, by the way, focusing on the $60 million part. Surprise, surprise. The show interviews a lot of big names with various topics nowadays. It has an Oprah feel, it is more sophisticated, which leads me to believe that Alex has additional producers behind her with a quasi-rebrand of the show. The conversation they had was really insightful. Miley talks about going to therapy. She talks about incorporating boundaries into her life. She says that she's created a filtration system for people in her life. If people are not additive, she cuts ties with them. Sound familiar? She vets people, and this is due to her experiences with past relationships. Miley specifically states that she feels more dominant in her relationships because of her success. She brings a lot to the table. Apparently says here she's uh, wealthier than the partner she dated, therefore she feels like she's the, on the more masculine role. Well, here's the deal. I have no idea what Miley Cyrus's net worth is right now, but I'm sure it's very high, and good luck... Miley or any other woman that has this level of success, and I respect anybody that has great success and wealth, 
Good luck trying to find a dude to match that. You're talking a bit, like one-tenth of the po- percentage of the population. And even then, women want a guy that does better than them. So how many guys out there that are single and available and looking that make that have, make more money and have more money than My- Miley Cyrus? See what I'm talking about? So of course, any guy that she gets with, she's going to feel like she has the upper hand. And a lot of guys would feel kind of uh, uneasy around her. I'm not saying they should, but a lot of them would. So this goes to show... And, and we're going to get more into this. How many, like I said, how many guys is she going to find that's going to be on her level, if you will, if she's calls it that? Not many. Therefore, it'd be probably easier to have a guy that, yeah, doesn't make as much money as her, blah, 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 and not have an issue with it. But that's the effinist narrative. She can be, she's wealthy, successful, but she can be with a guy who's not as wealthy or successful. Well, obviously, it's an issue, and therefore, she's not interested. And that goes against the effinist narrative. That goes on. She says that it's easier for her to have a relationship with women for that reason. Men feel insecure and inadequate with her. She has yet to date a man who matches her position in life. Again, how many dudes are walking around out there that have the same level of wealth, success, net worth, all that, that uh, Miley Cyrus has? Or what Miley Cyrus had maybe at the time that this article was written. I don't know when it was written. Not a whole lot. So that's unrealistic to think. See what I'm getting at here? And this can be applied to modern women walking around that do very well for themselves. She's learned what kind of person she needs based on who she is. She needs someone who completely secure in themselves who has their own thing going on. Well, I'm okay with the being secure in yourself thing, but their own thing going on. Define your own thing going on. Okay, can she be with a guy that maybe he is a... uh, Owns his own business, but he's not doesn't have her kind of net worth. Maybe he makes half a million dollars a year, which to any of us is fantastic. But to her, that's pocket change. Is that guy okay for having his own thing or not? Probably not. Says here, I think a lot of women can relate to how Miley is feeling. A lot of us are going on a journey of self-awareness and self-discovery. Some of us are realizing that we don't fit into the traditional world for all men. Her interview made me think about the ways I've determined that my own standards are too low. So here are some of the things, some of the signs. Number one, you feel dominant in your relationship. In my experience, I felt this way because I was further along in my life than the person I was dating. This has nothing to do with age. I've dated men who are a few years younger than me and men that are almost 10 years older. If you feel like you have more life experience or more access in life, it might be because you're not vibrating on the same frequency as your partner. You might be, I hate to say, out of your date's leak. Not in a bad way, but in a coming from a different walks of life way. Now, I get you want to have someone, if, you, if you're dating relationships, someone that you know you obviously can click with. Like You, you, know, you are on some similar level that you can see eye to eye in and, and things like that that will help stimulate you and all that. But again, nowadays you have so many, for instance, for your average Joe, more and more guys are choosing not to go to college. However, more and more women make up the greater percentage of the people graduating colleges, four years degrees, advanced degrees, and all that. So you have a lot of women that have graduating with these advanced degrees and they have uh, do very well for themselves, good positions in companies, status, make darn good money. And again, I respect anybody that has drive and success, but there are a lot of guys out there less and less are going to college because they realize I don't want to have those giant student loans. They're going to drag around me forever and I'd rather focus on a trade. And maybe I may not make as much as some of the guys with the college degrees, but at the end of the day, I have more because I don't have those enormous debts. Or a lot of guys do have a job that is not is I uh, say you could say blue collar, whatever they, it, it required a certification of some sort or trade, and they make more than the guys that have these advanced degrees. And still, the women will choose the guys with the advanced degrees and say these guys are beneath them, which is absurd and ridiculous, right? They'd rather choose a guy that has the advanced degree and position, all that, and all this debt as opposed to a guy that has no debt and does even better than that guy because of like who he comes across, et cetera, et cetera. You see what I'm talking about here? It's ridiculous. And again, back to the feminism thing, that says that, hey, she can make a lot of money and no big deal if the guy makes less than her. It should be okay. Well, it's not, clearly. Goes on, another one says, he says, I can learn a lot from you. Of course you want a partner who can grow and evolve with you. 
Each person brings different things to the table. The line usually comes from someone who realizes that they bring far less to the table than you do. I've had a man say this to me when I came to organizing his bills, navigating roommate situations, and navigating how to apply for jobs. I also had a man say this to me when he realized how long I've been in the entertainment business. He was shocked when I listed my work history. Unfortunately, I don't want to hold my hold uh I don't want to handhold my partner through life. I, I don't want to take on a project. I want to have a partnership. I'm all for helping friends out, but I don't want to constantly feel like I'm parenting my partner. Now, in this part here, she says, quote, I can learn a lot from you. Now, all of us have areas that we don't have knowledge in or we don't have not strong in. So it works well to learn from somebody that has knowledge we don't. Okay, there, there are some things that I'm not good at because I just don't have that interest. But I'd like to know, and I would just rather learn from somebody that has an expertise than have to go relearn the whole damn thing myself because I don't have time for that. So it doesn't make me less of a person or less of a man because one thing I don't, I don't have uh, knowledge in, but in her view, some guy she's gone out with, and they say, hey, I can learn a lot from you. That's a turnoff to her because in her mind, and I'm not justifying this, I'm just explaining, I'm, I'm reading between the lines here, she sees him as less. She wants a guy that pretty much is so secure and so sure of himself, he knows everything, hence above her. So when gals say they want to find that guy, they don't want just a guy, they make $150,000 a year and they have a master's degree. Ideally, they like a guy who makes $250,000 a year or more and has a PhD. Then they got something. But, but a dude that makes what she makes, that's eh, settling. And a guy makes a little bit less, or God forbid asks her, her areas, questions about her areas of expertise, well then, ah, uh, that's less than her and beneath her. See what I'm talking about? Another one says here, he tells you he's not right for you. This is an interesting one. Men realize uh, when they're punching above their weight, and they'll even mention it from time to time. I've heard these statements. Uh, you need a corporate 9-to-5 guy. I'm not him. Wow, you really have your shit together. He'll make statements that allude to the fact that he's never met a woman like you. For example, he might ask you how much you pay in rent. He'll ask uh, how you know how so many people in your industry. Basically, he, if he's in awe of you, he's less likely to put in a lot of effort. He knows he can't rise up to the occasion. What you just said there, awe of you. Translation, I don't want a guy who kisses my ass. I don't want a guy who puts me on a pedestal. I don't want a guy that makes me out to be so great. Now, these are some areas that I will say, like I said, there's some elements I agree with. We don't want a guy, if you're a relationship guy, that's a leader. That they're always in control. They know what to do. Even if they don't, they know what to do. And are always doing well and have their shit together. I'm all for that. But, see right here. Another one says, you're providing goods and services. I've done this a lot. I've dated a lot of dudes without cars. Therefore, they, weren't relying on, they were relying on me to get them to where they need to go. It was convenient for them to keep me around because it was, I was providing free transportation. Same goes for my apartment. I dated a few men who didn't have a viable place to, for us to hang out with privacy. She says, if a dude withholds the fact that he doesn't have a place to live, a job, or is without a car, it's probably because he knows a woman like you wouldn't go for that. So he keeps that information to himself or lies about it until he can't anymore. Now, I have no problem with her not wanting to get involved with a dude that does have his own place. That's a grown-ass man that doesn't have a place. Or he's living with his mom and dad. You know, like, not as a short-term temporary thing because maybe he lost his job. I'm talking about he's choosing to live with his mom and dad, or he just is, hasn't got off his ass to get a job, or things like that. Okay? Because obviously she wants a, a responsible, mature adult. I got no problem with that part. Because like I said, I encourage all you guys to get off your asses and make shit happen for yourself if you haven't done so already. But... Still, and here's a question, who are these dudes? These sound like Chad and Tyrone types. The ones that you can have fun with, they can push your buttons in the right way. But as I say, Chad and Tyrone don't have a job. Another one, you don't trust his leadership skills. Aha. Uh -huh. This might be on a more traditional side, so some of my readers may not agree with this point. For me, I do believe a man should have the ability to lead. And I agree with that. And this goes to show you that's what they want. He should be able to steer the relationship in the right direction, or at least be a collaborative participant in doing so. Blame this line of thinking in my dad. My dad is the type of person I go to life advice. He's the person I consult when I make significant life decisions. I've discussed job promotions, buying properties, travel, schooling, etc., etc. with him. I trust his judgment when it comes to these things. I've also watched him make life decisions with my mother and stepmother. So when I'm dating someone, I pick up on his ability to navigate life. If he's made poor choices, then I, then I have, 
where he's continuing to not handle his own life, there's no way he can lead a household, at least not a household with me in it. So that part, I agree in the sense that I know where she's coming from, where I tell you guys, women want leaders. They want the man to lead the relationship. And this is where a lot of guys get into trouble in the stories I get, where they let the woman lead. The guy needs to take charge. And she's obviously in this element, a little old school, which, okay, that's good in that element, to want a guy to lead. But the problem is nowadays, thanks to the effinist movement, guys don't lead. Lies, but guys have been embracing their feminine, and so they're masculine. And a lot of guys nowadays are raised in single-parent households where the mother is leading, so they then take on that role. They don't want that. So this is an area I can understand. But then we can go back to the effinist narrative. The effinist narrative says, that's okay. A woman can lead. A woman can lead the relationship and everything will be fine. Well, right here proves, no, it doesn't. And all the stories I've done, guys for these two years now where things go to hell in a handbasket. Not that the woman isn't a piece of crap for doing what she does in these stories, but that's an area where she ran the show and she was turned off. So, once again, proving that the effinist narrative is a steaming pile of crap. Uh, another one. Your levels of discipline are lopsided. So he's eating out every day, smoking, drinking, and partying far more than you do in a week. He doesn't have a routine. He doesn't manage his sleep schedule. Hell, he doesn't have a calendar where he writes down his obligations. It appears that his life is, isn't regimented. Everything is up in the air. Translation, Chad and Tyrone. She keeps going out with these Chad and Tyrone types, obviously, and wondering why they're not uh, more structured or ambitious and all that. Well, there's a reason she's going for these guys. Because the other type of guys that are structured and ambitious and had their shit together, obviously not bringing her not enough excitement. Now, I got no problem with God, with her having an issue with guys like this because guys should be on their grind, on their purpose, and all this, sitting around, fucking around, all that. But still, that goes against the narrative of the, the effinist narrative. I've dated a few men like this. This lifestyle is not sound to me. I don't fly by the seat of my pants, and I feel like the way of, this way of living creates a lot of anxiety and unhealthy habits. She says, additionally, I don't think you can raise well-adjusted children when you don't, aren't, aren't well-adjusted yourself. Again, she wants the man to lead. Children have to be on a schedule. They, they, they need adequate sleep. They need to get to school on time and all their extracurriculars. So if you're a parent who can't manage your own responsibilities, you won't be able to manage children. Now again, guys... There are elements that I don't have a problem with with her saying this. But the point is also is that this goes to show, because there are other parts of her thing that she was talking about, once these top, top guys. And I have no idea what she makes, what her status is. And she said entertainment industry, so obviously she does well. But how many guys walking around are going to make the kind of money that she makes that she would see as a uh, prize to catch with the status, the degrees, all that? Okay, I, I want to mention that as we go along here, because like I said, that's the main thing here, that... Gals are uh, settling too easy, and they need to be more picky. Well, you can't be more picky because there's nobody left. Uh, discipline is something I worked on myself. I have to practice discipline every day in order to reach my goals. If you're with someone who's less disciplined than you, this may not be for you. This list is just scratching the surface. Another huge reason why you should raise your standards could be because you're constantly accepting what you don't want in relationships. This was a big one for me. I was accepting casual behavior in relationships when I didn't want that. Well, again, back to I got no problem with wanting guys to shit together, but it sounds like, again, her standards are already crazy high, and not just one thing with also the money and the status and education, all that, which we all know, but also just talking about this, these things here, about these standards she has. How high can the standards go? Is there going to be any guys left? Because nobody's perfect, I want to point out. She says, take Miley's advice to heart. If you're not happy, get out. If you feel like the person you're dating is up to snuff, let them go with love. They'll, they will be right for someone else. You don't have to tolerate and suffer just because you feel bad or guilty. Suffer? If the guy doesn't make as much money as you, you're suffering. If the guy does, if you have a, ma a master's degree and he has a bachelor's, you're suffering. If the guy uh, doesn't have a six pack, but he has a, a two pack, so he's fit, but not seeing all six abs, you're settling, you're suffering. Uh, pursuing people who don't match your position in life looks very des uh, desperate. It shows there might not there might be something wrong internally, and other people can pick up on that. Recognize what your needs are and be unapologetic about it. Well, define needs. There's there's wants and needs, and if her needs are so ridiculously picky and, and her standards are so high and she's ridiculously picky, 
She's going to be alone and be a part of the massive numbers out there. They say, where are all the good men? There are no good men out there. So, like I said, guys, when, when I started this article, there's some elements so I can see where she's coming from because I'm all for guys getting their shit together, making things happen, not sitting on their ass. But guess what? A guy who may, who has his own business that can make several hundred thousand dollars a year, and he but he may not have a college degree, and he may have a two pack instead of a six pack, and he may be five foot ten instead of six feet tall. He's doing damn well for himself. But in today's modern gals that have all the multiple degrees amongst all these other things and a shitload of school debt, these guys wouldn't be good enough for them. They'd be beneath them, and it's ridiculous. So I thought it'd be a fun one to show you guys. I know I know a lot of you guys do dating or have done in the past, but don't do it anymore. You know exactly what I'm talking about, given what your experiences and all this, particularly with gals nowadays in their 20s and 30s. But these are the ones that in years to come will be writing articles, which I'll probably go over in 10 to 15 years, because I'll probably be doing this in 10 to 15 years. I'll be have a gray beard at that point. They'll be writing how they made a mistake. They are too picky. They'll be writing articles telling the young gals, don't be too picky. So the same girl basically saying, raise your standards. She'll be then in 15 years being alone with her cat and her box of wine saying, you need to lower your standards because you don't want to be alone and blah, blah, blah. And so we'll, we'll have a good laugh in 15 years. All right, guys, that is it for today. It's a quick one. That'll be an entertaining one to go over, showing you the present state of things and the mindset. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know, guys, about the kind of uh, pickiness you've dealt with in the dating market. I'd like to hear about it. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.